Okay, so hi there, my name is Deb. I'm the founder of Finds Calm here, and we take you from chaos to calm through conversations that we have virtually in this lovely Zoom space. And today, our conversation is around finding calm with authentic travel. So I know maybe some of the, us aren't traveling much these days, and we're, but we're planning, right? We're planning on it. Um, we're waiting for the day that we can um, hop into the uh, Amazon or travel to a foreign land, go to see the pyramids or any of these other amazing places all over the world. Uh, so what we'd like to talk about today is just how you can have a really authentic experience um, and possibly combine that with kind of having this calming and, you know, calming and reflective experience. So with that, I am going to bring on Lily and she's going to tell us a little bit about her story and her adventures uh, in travel. So go ahead, Lily. Hey, everybody. This is my favorite topic. I am really excited to talk about this today. Authentic travel. That's something that I have developed a big passion for over the last many years. I think it started as a child. When I was a child, I was uh, kidnapped and taken to Mexico and was down there for five years. So if you've seen the milk cartons, if you're old enough to remember the milk cartons and you saw the missing kid pictures on those milk cartons, you might have seen my face. Now to make that scary story a little bit less scary, my kidnapper was my biological mother and she was kidnapping us, my sister and me, at our own request because our biological father had gotten full custody of us and we did not feel safe with him and we asked her not to make us go back with him and the only way I mean, she tried to do it legally but the only way that we could get away from him was to break, break the law so she kidnapped us against the court order and we went on the run and we were on the run for seven years and five of those were in Mexico so I lived as a, a third culture kid it's what you call what you call me now because I lived as a child outside of my passport culture and so as a result of that, I now as an adult am very interested in other cultures, other languages, and learning as much as possible about the world when I travel. And I find that the more I get to know people in a traveling context, the more faith I have in humanity, the more I realize people are, you know, there's bad apples out there. Obviously, you want to be smart when you travel, especially women, but 99% um, of the people out there are good, and traveling authentically just reinforces my faith in humanity. So that's a little bit about me. Um, Thanks. Thanks, Lily, for sharing that um, that journey. It sounds it's definitely an adventure through life, right? Uh, having all those experiences, good and bad, it's uh, created this life that you have now and the person that you are now. And now you have that story to share um, with all of us. So I appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, we wanted to kind of start with a question for everybody and then maybe kind of get a conversation started around travel. Um, Lily is like an expert and she can talk travel all day. So if there is something that's on your mind in reference to traveling, if what like talking about safety or if you're talking about location or destination that you're maybe would like to travel but you might be fearful for some reason, we can talk about those kinds of things. Um, but I kind of just wanted to get an overall general sense of like, and if you're not on the camera, you could certainly put something in the chat if you're able to about like, maybe what does it mean when somebody says authentic travel to you? Um, and then I'll have Lily kind of talk a little bit about what she means more deeply in that. I know we, she just went over a broader term of it, but if you guys have any feedback on like what that means to you, um, certainly feel free to unmute yourself and, and we can have that conversation as well. Um, so does, with that said, does anyone raise their hand or wanted to just share a question or a comment about um, travel? 
I have a question. So do you have any recommendations for uh, guided tour groups to travel with if you're going to a place for the first time by yourself and you don't know anyone? Um, I'd be interested in checking that out for myself. I don't know like which ones are good and which ones, you know, are actually uh, cost efficient for the person. So if you can give some ideas, I would really appreciate hearing them. Sure. Yeah, I, to be honest, haven't done a whole lot of trips with guided tours. Um, most of my travel has been independent. Um, but when I do, I do, I have had some tour experiences and there are some places where you can't go without a tour guide. So you have to have one. Um, so I have, I, I have to say, uh, I mostly do independent travel where I plan my own trips. A lot of cities have walking tours. Often they're free. You just tip the guide at the end of the walking tour. And that's a great way to get an overview of a city is to do a walking tour. Um, it gives you a, a little picture of the history and the different things in the, in the city and then may give you some ideas for areas you wanna go back and explore in more depth later. So that's one thing I would recommend anybody do if they're traveling is if you if you can get in on a walking tour, definitely do that. The other thing I can say in regard to tours is one area where we did use a tour agency was in Africa. Uh, we climbed Mount Kilimanjaro and we went on safari. And there are ways to go on safari independently, but that's that's a pretty tricky thing for most people to try to figure out on their own. Um, and then, of course, on Mount Kilimanjaro, you're required to have a guide. So we hired one company to take care of that for us. And it was a local company. Um, and that's something that I recommend. If you can do a little bit of internet research and find a company that's local there without an office in the Western world somewhere, Europe or Canada or the United States or uh, whatever, if they have an office outside of their country, the price is gonna be much, much higher and not as much money is going to go to the locals. So I like arranging tours with local companies where most of the money is going into that community and helping the local people. And then you're also getting a much more authentic experience with um, just working. And it can be a little bit more challenging uh, I remember when we when we were setting it up, we had to wire the money over and you know, there's always a little bit of nervousness, but this company had been very well reviewed by multiple people. Um, they were, one of the reasons we chose them is that they had a, um, they were certified by a, a, an independent company that says that they treat their porters well. And that was something that was really important to us because a lot of um, especially mountain climbing and those kinds of things when they're when they you are hiring porters to carry the equipment a lot of companies will cut corners and mistreat them not feed them well not equip them well and a lot of them will will die so you know those are just some things that we considered um, when we were looking for a tour company I hope that answers your question it's I know it's not exactly what you were asking I have heard of various tour companies but I don't have any personal experience with any of them. No, I appreciate the response. So it sounds like you've done more solo trips than anything else. Did you prefer that or it's just the way that it happened for you? I kind of go on, I, I wouldn't say, actually most of my travel has not been solo. It's been either with my husband or with friends okay. um, or with, you know, somebody in the family. I went on a trip with my sister one time. So it's not solo usually, but it's independently planned. I don't hire somebody to plan the trip for me. I plan it myself. Gotcha. Do yeah. you ever do it like on your own, on your own, like just yourself traveling? To I've spent a month in Mexico by myself last year, but, um, I don't know. I, that's, that's kind of my home base now. So I wouldn't consider that traveling. That's more like I was just right. at home and my husband came back to the States before I did. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of, and that's something I, I want to do actually is some actual solo travel. And I think Lynn is coming on in a few days, August 5th. 
And she's going to be talking specifically about solo travel. So definitely jump in on her session because she knows a whole, she's done a lot of that. She's got a lot of experience in that realm. Um, and she actually also does trip planning. So if you want somebody to kind of help you out and, and you're interested in Europe, that is her specialty. Um, so for sure, uh, check out Lynn's, uh, Lynn's talk in a few days. Okay, cool. So usually you just do it with your family and friends, it sounds like. Yeah, for the most part. And, and I was going to say, I also, I find opportunities. Uh, okay, so I'll give, I'll give a few quick examples. Um, how I ended up in Norway was a friend of mine was getting married to a Norwegian woman in Norway. So we went over there for the wedding and we just extended our trip. You know, so we're going over there anyway. Let's make a big adventure out of it. And we were over in Scandinavia for five weeks. Um, Galapagos Islands. A friend of mine was building a school in the Galapagos Islands and had a house with a spare room and said, hey, any friends want to come and visit us? So a friend and my sister and I went down there while they were there, stayed in their house. And then we also got, this was another thing where we arranged a tour with a local company on a boat around the Galapagos Islands for eight days. So, you know, um, I, I kind of jump on opportunities as they come up. Sometimes it's just like, we'll decide to go somewhere or sometimes a friend is there anyway. So we just make an adventure out of it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I have also visited a friend who lives in Africa, you know, West Africa. So I went to West Africa back in 2006 and spent three weeks with her. So, yeah. Any other questions about travel or uh, what authentic travel means to you? What do you think of when you hear authentic travel? I would say, I just wanted to comment, I put a bunch of things in the chat right now. You were like reading my mind as you're like talking because I was like, oh, we have Lynn coming next week and she's going to talk about solo travel and she's a travel planner. So yeah. she could definitely be answering the questions that Priscilla had about recommending tours and which tour groups would make the most sense. Um, and, or you could just work with her as far as like yeah. booking out a trip too. Yeah, um, she could directly help you with that. Yeah, exactly. And then I also know um, Traveling Jackie, who I know L Lily knows, and, and uh, Leah and Stephanie and Allison, Carolyn, um, you guys might know her from the, I don't know who, who was on the Camp Indie call, but she was actually on the Camp Indie call uh, and recently, and um, she has a podcast, uh, it's called Jump, and um, she does trips and, and group, group trips in like South America, these, I think, is her main. The Patagonia trip is her main yeah. trip, I believe. Yeah. But then she had a, she, well, she, she would have had not a pandemic happened. Yeah. <laughs> she was going to have, there was one in Italy she was doing, like a ladies only one. So she does some like ladies only retreats that are like international typically, like at least once or twice a year, I think she does them. So I was actually looking into the, to the ladies only one at one point. I thought that would be really cool. Hers are kind of, the price, I mean, you get a lot for the price, but she like does all the setting up and organizing. So, I mean, most of those, most of the tours, you're, you know, you're paying for them to do all that legwork for you. And that's why they're a little bit, the price point is a little bit higher versus you spending the time to like book your flight and your, you know, your Airbnb and um, hire a travel, um, a lot of work like a tour guide. Work. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, I just knowing from my, my own travels, there's, I've done a lot of planning out of, you know, the Airbnb and, and stuff like that. And I'm actually trying to do the whole authentic travel when we go to California a little bit more because my boyfriend's from California. And so I'm going to be kind of listening to him and meeting some locals in California. And we only have booked one hotel for one night and then a three day stay in an Airbnb by Joshua Tree. And that's it. And we're there for two weeks. So I'm like, this is usually I have my hotels or my lodging and everything booked before I even get on the plane. Like, so I know where I'm going the whole time. Yeah, but not having it completely booked out also 
opens up opportunities for more authentic experiences because all of a sudden it's like, hey, you can just ask on the ground, what, do you, what is your recommendation? You might find something that you would never have found um, if you had booked ahead. So, you know, it could lead to some pretty cool, memorable adventures. You never know. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm hoping for. So I'm like, letting go of the whole planner mode in me and trying to. I used to be an ultra planner too. Like I had everything planned out. And in the past several years, I've gotten a lot more like, I'll have my first night at least. Um, you know, I'll book us a night when we get there, especially if we're getting arriving, if our flight lands late at night or something, we want to know where we're going to be that night. We don't want to be right. looking for a hotel at 11 PM, right. you know, yeah. but um <laughs> But even when you book ahead, like one time last year, last year, yeah, we were in Costa Rica. The place that we booked said on there, it was a, it was through booking and it said on there, no, it was through hotels.com. It said on their uh, listing that they had a 24 hour desk and we got there at about 11 PM and it was closed. And they said, no, we close at 10 PM. So we had to go find a place in the middle of the night <laughs> in San Juan, Costa Rica. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Um, so one other, uh, one other company like traveling Jackie, I, I thought about mentioning her, but I don't have any personal experience, but I'm sure she's great. Um, I also had a friend who was really into traveling and she was single woman. Uh, and she was an older woman as well. Um, so I don't know if this kind of specializes in older travelers or if it's for everybody, but it's called overseas adventure travel. OAT, OATtravel.com. She swore by them. She went on a lot of things with them and she always talked about how great they were. So it uh, be worth checking out. But um, like I said, I don't have experience with tr travel agencies that plan my entire vacation for me. Usually I, I pretty much do that myself. So yeah. Well, I want to share a few tips, if that's okay, uh, of authentic travel and what it means to me. Um, oh, yeah, Leah said she had that experience too. The hostel was closed and ended up being saved by a hotel night, uh, a hotel night watch who let us stay in a hotel lobby and had to get out by 6 a.m. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> a little on the slide. <laughs> Yeah, experiences like that. Ours led to um, the the place that wouldn't let us in was actually pretty nice. They called another place on our behalf um, and called an Uber for us and got us over there, which you know was nice. It would have been nice if they just let us in, but they and they I had to work a little bit to get a refund but anyway we ended up at a at a cool place with a with a family actually that was really fun to talk to so it worked out well um so tip number one that i have for authentic travel has to do with lodging and i would say if you can possibly stay with a local or at least in a local neighborhood, you are going to have a much richer experience than if you stay in a big box hotel. I mean, you could get a Holiday Inn or Best Western room almost anywhere in the world, but it's going to feel like a Holiday Inn or Best Western anywhere else in the world. If you want to get a local experience, you can either stay with a family and buy, you know, one easy way to do that is on Airbnb. You can book a private room in a home and uh, just make sure it's a private room in a in a home with a local family, not a private room in like a hostel because those are on there too. Um, but you can uh, stay with a local family. Also, one thing that we have done a lot is couch surfing. I don't know if you're familiar with couch surfing, but it is a platform where you can um, travel and stay with people for free. There's no money exchange, but at the same time, we try not to freeload. I mean, we're staying with them. We're not paying them for the night, but we always try to do something for them. We'll cook them a meal or um, my husband is a swing dancer. You know, he, he was president of the dance association in college. And so sometimes he will teach them, you know, some swing dance moves or something like that. Just something so that we're contributing and not just, you know, based on what, what they're interested in, you know. 
Uh, we've also traveled to some interesting places like the South Pole, and sometimes we'll give a South Pole presentation to the kids or something like that. Um, so that's that's something that has been pretty popular in, in previous couch surfing states. But anyway, you're with a family that lives there. So you're getting a the experience of what it, you know, a little slice of life in that neighborhood or in that home. So lodging is one way for, uh, for you to do authentic travel and potentially save a lot of money too. Um, if we're gonna be someplace long-term, we maybe not don't wanna stay with a family because you, know, you want a little more privacy, you want your own space after a while, but we'll still try to get a home or an apartment, uh, an entire place in a regular neighborhood, not like in an apartment block where somebody has rented out a whole block of apartments to other travelers and you're not actually meeting locals there. So um, yeah, try to find something that's authentically local, either the neighborhood or the home. Uh, the second tip I have has to do with shopping. So I think that one of the most fun experiences for me when I, when I travel to most other countries in the world outside of maybe Canada, you know, the United States and Canada are pretty similar, but most other uh, countries you go in, even, even other English speaking countries, you go in and the products on the grocery store shelves are quite different from the ones that we have here, you know? So I, um, I love to go into grocery stores. I mean, grocery shopping here in the States is one of my least favorite things to do, but it's one of my favorite things to do in other places. Uh, just go wherever the locals do their grocery shopping, whether that's open air market and finding out, finding all kinds of exotic fruits and vegetables and asking them, you know, like, how do you prepare this? And uh, maybe getting some some recipes or some ideas for them are like, how do you eat this thing? What is it? Is it supposed to be cooked or do you just eat it raw or what is this thing, you know? So um, that's a really fun way to get an authentic experience where you're interacting with the locals, you're asking them questions about these, um, these different foods um, or in the grocery stores, just like finding some random product on the shelf and go, you know, that looks like an interesting thing. Uh, when we were in Norway, we were getting ready to go backpacking for a few days. We we're going to go out on some trails and go backpacking. So we went into this grocery store and we're like trying to find something that is, you know, dense calories, lightweight, you know, dehydrated, that's good for backpacking, you know, that you can carry and you know, prepare out on the trail. And um, so we found this porridge type stuff and the, <laughs> the language is Germanic and some of the words are kind of like English because English is also a Germanic language. So like, I could understand about half the words on the package, so I kind of could guess how to prepare it. Like, okay, it's like one cup of water and one cup of milk, and okay, I think we can do this. So we bought it and, and it was delicious, like this perfect backpacking food. Uh, we, turned, we found out later that it was a really common porridge that they have. For breakfast they're very rich perfect for backpacking because we're burning lots of calories right so um so yeah little experiences like that shopping where the locals shop just trying new things being a little adventurous with the food and we're vegetarians so i don't get crazy and eat bugs and strange meats that i've never you know i just no thank you i'm vegetarian but um anything else though if it doesn't have meat i will try it i'm curious to see what it's like so yeah. Any questions so far on lodging, like how to find a good spot, maybe some some experiences you've had traveling, lodging, staying, have, has any, have any of you stayed with locals before when traveling? Leah has? You want to, do you want to tell us a little bit about your experience? Sure. I've mostly stayed with locals um through woofing so oh, working yeah. on organic farms that's usually how i meet people and it's like a much cheaper way to travel and then you're giving something back to them because you work like four to six hours per day usually um and then you get accommodation and food in return but yeah it's really neat because oftentimes they just give you like a room in their house or something um and you eat most meals with them and 
yeah, so you just get to learn about the culture. It's really cool. That's so cool. What, which countries have you done it in? I've actually mostly woofed just in the U.S. and Canada and in the U.K. Um, uh -huh. very briefly. And then I was at a farm in Mexico, which wasn't woofing, but it was kind of similar. Um, there were a lot of people living there. Um, so yeah, we just got to eat with them and they taught us how to make tamales and all the food and grow it. So it was very neat. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard of woofing, but that's one thing I haven't tried yet. It's been something that I've wanted to do for the longest time. My husband and I, we've talked about it, like we should do that sometime, but we never actually have. And yeah, every now and then I go it's to the woofing website, like I should sign mm -hmm. up and do that. <laughs> we really need to do that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Any other stories anybody wants to share experiences either shopping or lodging with in a local kind of context oh come on hi you guys uh um good afternoon right um let's see so i've stayed uh, when i was younger um, I did some homestays or staying with families while traveling, mainly as part of, um, it was a group exchange program, but the nice thing is that we were, uh, we would travel as a group and then kind of break out into, in, you know, we're paired with families so that we could stay with them um, for a, about a week and get to experience some things of the local culture so that the whole point of the, the group travel was, of course, to be able to understand another culture. Um, part, of, part of it was also learning a bit about government and how some things you know, work in other countries besides what we've known growing up in a, in a uh, democracy. Um, so, but it, the thing that really stands out to me the most is really how uh, just becoming a part of someone else's family and the way that they are just willing to take really strangers when you think about it strangers in um mm -hmm. it's just that every everything does really start to feel like you you live there or you could live there i mean there's a there's a space and a place for you at the table there's a space for you to sleep right there's a you're invited and welcomed into all of the activities and so i think it's really just a really um it, it's it goes right under authentic i mean if you file yeah. all of those things that you get to do um as really you know as if i had decided to just start living there and so it it made a, a um, real impression on me and i would say kind of gave more definition to why we travel you know why do people travel anyway or why did i really start loving um, that aspect of of travel, um, being that my family's from from Puerto Rico, and actually, Lily, I'm going to ask you about your trip. <laughs> um, but you know, I grew up traveling just because we would go back and visit family. Though to me, it was like visiting grandma's house, right? So it was still traveling and being somewhere different. But um, it was it was kind of a, a part of what I did with people that I know. So to be able to go and experience it from perfect strangers which, you know, okay, yes, they like knew what they were getting into. They agreed to welcome people in. And so there's a little bit of a, a setup, I guess you can say. But really after that, it's up to you to make something out of it, right? I mean, you, you yeah. can kind of stay in your room and just kind of do nothing, or you can really say, you know, I want to interact with these people who are welcoming me into their home. Um, and so I love, I loved that I was able to make friends with the kids and their family and um so much so actually that the one so and when i say i did this when i was younger i meaning like college years right so <laughs> um one of the girls in the family was my age and she the following year then so we stayed in touch um we became pen pals and then the following year she came and visited us and at the time i lived close to new york i'm from new jersey so you know it's very appealing i guess to foreigners to go to new york city <laughs> I yeah, that I grew up there. It, it's appealing. Yeah, it's it can be appealing, but it's um you know so that was a really neat point for her to be able to kind of turn around and do the same thing. And we hosted her, her friends, you know, who were host the previous year. So it's you know things like that where you can build um, some friendships and relationships and and really understand um, even deeper beyond the time that you're in that country. 
you know, stay in touch with people, get to know them. Um, that, and I would say um, uh, on a different occasion, a few years later, I also got to stay with another family. Um, the previous trip I was talking about was in, it was one family I stayed within the UK in England and then another one in Sweden. Um, but a few years down the road um, for a choir uh, trip, and if anyone ever wants to travel, get into music because you will travel. <laughs> like <laughs> choirs, choirs and bands go places. Um, and so we stayed with um, a family uh, in a tiny little town called the Poldesvalda. And I will always remember it because it was just so quaint and authentic. It was like that, but when you look at like a picture of a German like town with a castle and a hill and mountains around it and trees and all of that and um, where it just seems like so much more rustic and woodsier than anything you could find in America. I mean, and we have awesome woods here in the US for sure, but it was one of those quintessential little German towns, just so tiny. And the people there didn't know English. So then when you get to that point where you're staying places where people really don't know how to communicate with you, that steps it up a level, right? Because then you have to get your phrase book out or force yourself to start making the same language work and everything. And it just becomes um, a kind of unique, a, a more unique experience if you um, need to um, force your way into trying to understand each other and still realize that people want to do that. You know, it's not like everyone will, oh, we'll just give up and go to sleep, you know, even though it's eight o'clock. I mean, it's, we, you just hang out and you talk with people and you figure out how to make it work. Um, and I think if I remember correctly, our choir director, you know, he just said, hey, why don't you, you know, bring some stuff to share with them, some American kind of things. <laughs> so I, I think we brought maybe like Hershey bars and I don't know, but it's um, just nice to know that there's people around the world that, that really do want to get to know strangers um, and I will say sometimes it feels tough to be an American abroad because it, it, there's just so much stuff yeah <laughs> but, you know, stuff happens everywhere right so um, and and every country you know every country's own citizens are probably going to be critical of their country so I try to remind myself like stop being critical of feeling you know weird that I'm American abroad because it's I don't represent a lot of the stuff, you know, I'm trying to represent like an, an authentic side to where I come from. Yeah. And that's the thing I want to learn when I go to other countries too. So, yeah. but um, yeah, so that's, it's, that's a, a, a takeaway for me just from being with families. Um, but I would love to hear more about Puerto Rico if there was something that, that you and your husband did that was kind of unplanned or did you find, you know, some things that were just like, oh, now we're like really living it. <laughs> well, the earthquake was unplanned, but um, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, we were there during the big earthquake uh, at the beginning of the year. So, um, yeah, that was an interesting experience. But we were really on the best part of the island as you possibly could be during because the epicenter is on this side and we were on this side. And so we were like as far away from it as you could be and still be on the same island. So uh, we felt it, but it was not super strong it knocked out the power but didn't do a whole lot of damage in our area so uh, yeah we went out and went hiking and didn't even realize but while we were hiking a tree fell so that was interesting very close to us <laughs> that was a little bit scary <laughs> we weren't sure if it had been weakened by the earthquake or what but it just like came down on the trail right like i don't know 50 feet away from us but um yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was going to ask you, I, th I think Deb asked too, like with what organization did you have these experiences with where you live with the families, Lise? Is that an organization? Sure. Really yeah, it, it does still exist. Um, and I've often gone back to visit their website because I really am thinking like I, I might want to do this as a chaperone. Um, it's called People to People International. Um, okay. It started back in the 50s, I want to say, 50s or into the early 60s, um, kind of as a, I guess it was an effort, a, a post-presidential effort, had, you know, one of the Eisenhowers um, started it, but it was, you know, to exactly do that, start to 
build more relationship. You know, when you think about the 40s and the 50s and what happened, you know, between the U.S. and most of the rest of the world, you know, there's, there's, or, or a lot of the allies, let's say a lot of the allies and the rest of the world, um, you know, just things, you know, people need to start understanding each other again. And yeah. It was born out of that desire to start up, um, bringing up a generation of, of teens that would want to learn more from history and not repeat it and um, be welcoming and, and welcomed um, at the same time. So yeah, that was um, uh, geared towards high school students. Um, I had just graduated high school actually when I went on that trip and it was about four weeks out of my summer and we traveled through. But, but yeah, the organization still exists and you can apply, um, I believe, to be one of the leaders or that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like such a good, and that's one of the beauty beauties of travel, I think, and when you're connecting with locals in this way, is not only are you learning about their culture, but hopefully you're presenting a good side of our culture to them as well, and we're, you know, learning to understand and um, so connect with each other on a deeper level than, you know, just through you know, most of what we know about the rest of the world we learn through the media mm -hmm. and it, most of what they learn about us they learn through the media and it's usually yeah. not positive so um it's nice when we can present the best of us and when we can see the best of them you know yeah at least that's a true fuller picture of you know instead of this very incomplete one-sided picture that we see uh through the media um that's true. I've also heard of WorkAway. I don't have you done anything with WorkAway or anyone else here on the call used um, WorkAway to find lodging slash experiences um, in exchange I've, for working? I have heard of it. And actually, we had a, I don't think it was WorkAway itself. It was a similar website, though, because our, our number of websites, HelpX is another one of them. Um, and woofing is another one, you know, where they have these types of things where you help with construction or gardening or something in exchange for um, lodging and food. And we actually had it up there. Uh, my husband built an earth bag house a few years ago. Um, so natural building is something that a lot of people are interested in. And we needed extra help. So we put a thing up on the profile inviting people to come out and, and provide them with food and lodging in exchange for their help with the earth bag house. But unfortunately, we did not get any takers on that. So mm. it's kind of a bummer. But it would have been interesting to experience that, that know, would have been from the hosting cool. side, you know. <laughs> Leah says she'll come next time. All right. Well, if we build another earth bag house, I'll let you know. That was a heck of a lot of work. I'm not sure I'm up for it. <laughs> but my husband might. <laughs> what was the, um, you had mentioned, uh, Lily, one of the other companies. What was that company again? HelpX is one of them. It's just help and then the letter X. Um, and then there's one. I think the one of the ones, I think we had our thing on two sites, but one of the ones is called the Poosh, I believe. I don't know how it got its name, P-O-O-S-H. And that's specifically for natural building product mm -hmm. projects. Um, so yeah, there's, there's some different ones out there. Yeah, there was one that was featured on, I can't remember if it was Jason or I think it was Jason's podcast about um doing temporary work like a six month or like I'm trying to remember what that was called do you remember when it was like a short term like you would just go for like six months or um yeah i mean i i know some of these are can be that long just depends oh on. cool jobs <laughs> cool jobs okay cool jobs I, so if, that's one i haven't heard of uh cool works actually sorry correction cool, cool works, works. Oh, okay. um yeah that's a website that you can find like a job um and do it for a season mm -hmm. and check out like li living like the local in that way where it's like longer slow travel um yeah. and you can also get paid and i usually it depends on the job. I mean, I was really into this for a while. I was going to do it like two years ago, but um, it just, I never figured out how to make that work. But um, they have jobs all over. I mean, it's just US. It's not international. 
but like, if you just wanted to check out like other parts of the country, like, you know, if you're on the East coast and you want to check out the West coast and you can go at the season and like stay for like six months, some of those places they pay you and they actually give you lodging and sometimes they give you lodging and food. So yeah. if you're looking for something, I mean, most people probably already have a job or something, but maybe you want to change your career and that's something you're like, I don't know if I'd want to be a, <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah. I know, I know Joe does the, um, skiing. skiing. And so a lot of it's like seasonal like that. Like you go to Colorado for the season of skiing and then you would, you know, then you would come national back. National parks are another one where you can work in a national park for the season when they're really busy and then they, you know, they don't need as many people in the other seasons. So, but you, yeah. you're there during the summer when they're really busy and help out with food right. service you know, trail maintenance or whatever it is they need. So. Right. Oh, and there's some in um, Alaska. Um, yeah, there's actually the thing I looked into when I was in college way back. Oh, yeah. Uh, fishing, I know, in Alaska is another seasonal thing. Yeah. That pays really well from what I've heard. But I'm not sure I'd want to do that. Can you imagine fishing? Like being on a boat with fish? Like well, the smell? <laughs> remember, remember um, Alex... Leaks. Yeah, um, Alexi. Alexi. I always say his name wrong. But yeah, he was, that was what he did. Every, now he's working on a farm, which is totally location dependent. So he's no longer looking to travel, but that's pretty cool. Uh, I just want to comment. Um, there's a, it's uh, comments in here in the, um, <laughs> in the uh, chat there, just talking about how it sounds like a dream job, some of these, and they are. Yeah, but they are jobs too. It's not like, impossible yeah. you can totally um he's like he's like i think that's gonna happen for me <laughs> i see it and i see it already i love it um that's great if you do have an experience or if you get a job you'll have to share it with us in the find calm here community because we'd love to hear about your experience for sure um last so year uh, my husband and i were in the grand canyon national park just to hike and yeah. um we there they had it was around earth day and they had all like all these booths and stuff around the visitor center um and they were recruiting people to come and work at the grand canyon and, and they're like we need people in all kinds of positions and keith's like well i'm an electrician oh we need you you know i'm like mm. oh keith come on we could work in the grand canyon wouldn't that be awesome yeah but the pay is nothing like what he gets when he travels to other parts so oh well <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess if you don't have a lot of overhead, I was at, when were you in the Grand Canyon? April, uh, okay. last, was it 2019? I think so, yeah. Okay, I was there last year, but I was there in October. Um, I took my mom there, that was where she wanted to go, was the Grand Canyon, and so we went during shoulder season, and we flew into Albuquerque, New Mexico, we did the balloon festival, oh, and then, nice. yeah, and then we drove over, um, over to, um, Flagstaff, uh, and then we drove up from Flagstaff to the South Rim on one day, and then we did the North Rim the following day, which almost nobody, they say only 10% of people go to the North Rim, and if anybody's talking about or thinking about going to the Grand Canyon, get to the North Rim, because it is yeah. like an amazingly different experience. It's very touristy on the South Rim, yes. and when you get to the North Rim, I mean, that to me is an authentic Grand Canyon experience because you can literally go trail hiking, um, you know, without going too far into like the canyon, you can do these yeah. like amazing little like trail hikes and you cannot, they have a lodge actually. So you could like stay and you could have like dinner up there and, but then like go hiking during the day if you were going to do a couple days. It's just a really, it was just so much different. In April was actually to do a rim to rim hike. Oh, wow. The South Rim was still closed because they had a late snow, so we weren't able to do it. It was so, you know, we were really bummed because that's what we were going to do is hike from one rim to the other. And we still plan to go back and do that at some point. But That's awesome. I've been told, so w while we're on the subject of Grand Canyon, I actually, my dental hygienist, believe it or not, I was talking about going last year before I went and she said, oh, my husband and I did that and we did an in-canyon hike, like a three-day in-canyon hike. They were training for that for six months because that's how 
challenging that hike can be with the terrain mm -hmm. and the the, the uh, heat elevation. And, and, yeah. and the elevation Extreme and carrying temperature changes between the top and the bottom too think yes and then carrying your gear like very you have to pack very minimalistic because whatever you're carrying it on your back for that whole the three days um so i thought how amazing would that be to have and that's talking about like a group so you could actually book that and then people would guide you through the grand canyon and then um, you, you know, some of that, they do provide some, like, I think they provide like a tent or something. There's some basic supplies that they, um, actually provide when you're paying for that. And then they're giving you all this education about the Grand Canyon while you're doing the tour, while you're doing the hike, which you wouldn't have, you would have to be looking in books to understand, oh, those rocks are how many millions of years old or whatever. Uh, instead, you can just have somebody giving you all this history. So I think that's another way to have a deeper dive into an experience where you're learning a lot more about a specific place that a lot of people go like the Grand Canyon, but not everybody has that kind of an experience. Like yeah. very few people yeah. hike into the rim and things like that. Yeah. So it's cool. Yeah. Lots I've of hiked down into the Canyon numerous times from, you know, but just the South rim, you know, go down, one of the main trails, Kaibab or Bright Angel, and come up the other one. Done yeah. that a few times, but the um, Bright Angel one is popular. Yeah, those are super popular trails. Tons of people on them. Um, but th those are the main, most popular trails. But it's really interesting if you in the Grand Canyon, like that's kind of where the concentration of people is. If you go on to one of the other trails, even on the South Rim, far fewer people. Like still more than the North Rim, probably, but far, far fewer people. In, in any of the other trails. So I just saw in the chats that um, Stephanie did Angloville. Um, that's something that has, I've heard of, you know, from several friends who have done it and it sounds really cool. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Stephanie, in case anybody wants an experience living abroad? Sure. Hopefully my internet connection's okay out here. Um, but let me know if I freeze up or anything. But I would say Ankleville is definitely a really cool experience. Um, so you stay in really nice hotels. Um, and the food is really good. And they feed you three times a day. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you're full after every meal. And it's like local food too. Mm. Um, so that's a good experience. And like I said, like you meet, the students are all locals. Mm -hmm. And I worked with adults. So it was cool to just kind of get to know them and like hear where they're coming from and why they want to learn English. Um, and then you, yeah, you just learn a lot about the culture that way as well. So definitely recommend the experience. I'm happy to chat about it with anyone afterwards. Awesome. Yeah, that's something I, another thing in addition to woofing that I would be interested in trying someday. It just sounds like yeah. so much fun. And it could be something that you do with your husband too. Like you'll yeah. just stay in the room with him and then just meet different people throughout the week. Yeah. In fact, uh, the people I know mo most well who did it are a couple, you know, husband and wife and they did it together. So mm -hmm. yeah, it can work if you're single and it can work if you're in a relationship, if you're both on board. So yeah. cool. Yeah. It's also a good way to meet other travelers as well who are, you know, similar mindset. The nice thing about traveling too, like not only meeting locals, but meeting other travelers is suddenly you have this network that's global, yeah. you know? So yeah, very cool. I'm going to share a couple more tips if that's okay. I know we're getting close to the end of the hour, but uh, I'm going to rattle a few off here, just um, local ideas. One of, another one is transportation, traveling the way the locals do. Um, if you, if the locals get around on subways or city buses or, um, you know, whatever mode that they use, it's usually not only the cheapest, but also another way to just get an experience of the, you know, a slice of the local life. And one thing that we have done that we really enjoy is just get on, uh, we, you know, don't have a specific plan or agenda, just get on a metro or a city bus ride it to the end of the line, get off and walk around and see what's out there. And we found some really cool, you know, like sometimes it takes you to the edge of town and you can find some great places to hike or 
interesting neighborhoods. Like one time we went up into this one neighborhood and we met this um, lady who was, she told us about this, this, we were in Ecuador, Loja, Ecuador. And this lady told us about um, this uh, dance thing that they had every Sunday. We're like, oh, we'll come back Sunday and check it out. So we went back uh, the following Sunday and it was like the Zumba thing, you know? And it was just like, they set up the speakers out in the street and everybody in the, in the neighborhood like comes out and does Zumba. And it's, it was a government sponsored like program to keep people fit, uh, free. Uh, they sponsored the instructors to come and do these in the various neighborhoods. So when we found out about it, then we started realizing they do these in a lot of the neighborhoods and we found one in our own neighborhood. Um, so we started going and, they, and the one in our neighborhood wasn't just Sundays, it was like every weekday morning. So we would get up and go literally like dance party in the streets every morning uh, with the locals. It was a blast. So that's just something that we found because we rode local transportation out, you know, <laughs> you never know. Uh, in Amsterdam, we found this really beautiful park out on the edge of Amsterdam that we went and hiked for quite a while through the park just because we rode the metro out there. So. Um, but then it's a great way to get around once you figure out the, the system, it's gonna save you a lot of money. So uh, I highly recommend uh, trying to figure out the local transportation and, and availing yourself of that. Um, tip number four, slow travel if you can. I mean, I know some of us are in Location India and our whole thing is let's, let's travel as much as we want to. Um, people who have regular uh, nine to five jobs and two weeks vacation a year, maybe this is not as much of an option and I recognize that. But if you have the option to spend a month or more in a place, um, it, you can really seep into the local routine of life. You know, you start going to the shops, people start recognizing you, you start developing friendships and connections with the people in that area. You're staying in the, in the same neighborhood, uh, you get to know your neighbors. Um, you get invited over to people's houses for uh, meals. I mean, all of that, you know, can happen if you slow travel and just stay in one place. It's also, you know, if you're concerned about money, slow traveling can be cheaper than staying at your own home, you know, depending on where you are. If you're staying in a, in a country where the expenses are not as high, you can rent an apartment and eat and you know, have all these experiences with locals and spend less than you would if you had stayed at home because even just the food is more expensive at home. So, um, so that's a really neat way to just, and, and the other thing you can do if you're in a place long enough is find out what are the local meetup groups and things like that that you can get involved with. If you like to go hiking, if you like to do yoga or something like that chances are there's a yoga class in the community somewhere you can join it and like suddenly you start seeing these same faces in the yoga class every time you go um that's something we've done the zumba thing that we did in ecuador every day um you know we have a friend that we're still in touch with because of that two friends actually that we're still in touch with from zumba um and you know so yeah slow travel is i highly recommend I know it's tempting, especially for people who haven't traveled much at all before, to like see as much as possible and like tag as many countries and cities as possible. But if you if you slow down, you're really going to get a much richer experience than if you just and you'll burn yourself out to fast traveling and go through your wallet a whole lot faster. So there's a lot to be said for slow travel. Um, I I find it much more authentic personally. Um, one more real quick language. I know that's the elephant in the room. What if you can't talk to the people? Um, and I've discovered that, I mean, I speak English and Spanish, so it makes it, it, makes it nice uh, for me when I travel in Latin America to be able to communicate without any trouble. But um, I've also traveled to Thailand and uh, places where they, you know, speak Swahili or French or some other language that I don't speak. So um, Romanian, um, what I try to do is learn at least the greetings. We learn how to say hello, good morning, goodbye, nice to meet you, what's your name, you know, 
just some, a few basic phrases like that can go a long ways. Um, and then it's really useful to know the numbers. So then you can kind of communicate about prices when you're in a market or something like that. So just knowing the numbers and a few greetings, um, what I try to do is before I go, um, if, you know, if I know I'm going somewhere a few months before I go, I try to start listening to maybe some podcasts in that language, just get my ears used to hearing it. So it doesn't sound as jarring when I get there. Um, and then just memorize a few of the, you know, there's so many resources online, just Google it, you know, and you can learn how to say a lot of those basic phrases before you go. And the locals, when you're making an effort, especially in, in languages that are a little more unusual, like Thai or Swahili, and you greet them in their language, they love it. And they're so impressed because most people don't try. They don't even try. So the fact that you're trying, even if you can't carry on a conversation, they love it. So um, I, I found that that has really opened up a lot of doors where we've had some friendly in, in exchanges with the locals just because I made a little bit of an attempt. Um, so those are my tips for authentic travel. Um, if anybody else wants to chime in with some experiences they've had with any of those kinds of things, I would love to hear everybody else's experiences as well. Yeah, we are just about at the time here. It's 3.01, so um, we are going to have to end it. If somebody does have something they want to share, feel free. Um, we can stay later if, if some people wanted to. But I did want to mention, if you do have to go, um, you can share your experiences in the Find Calm Here community. Everybody on this call is already in the Find Calm Here community. We so continue the conversation yes. there in the community. Let's just the whole The whole bow on this is that we have an amazing community to talk about how you can find calm and we can talk about travel and all these other topics. And so that's really what the find calm here community is built around is like, this is just like scratching the surface at this topic, obviously. So there's lots more we can talk about and Lily is in the community. You can reach out to Lily directly and say, Hey, I want to, you know, dive deeper and talk to you some more. I put her website in the links. They will also be in our video, um, our replay section. So I'll have all of our notes in the replays for the show notes and then on the YouTube channel as well. So I wanted to just let you know that next week, we're going to be talking about Find Calm with solo travel, which we kind of preemptively talked about um, earlier. So you guys are all interested in travel. Come back next Wednesday at 7 p.m. and we'll connect you with Lynn. And she's uh, also a travel expert. Um, does anybody have any last words that they wanted to share? Any, any feedback, conversations around this topic or anything? Um, you wanted to ask Lily since we have her right here. I just wanted to say I really appreciated this talk. It was very informative. Um, I've done some traveling, but more on the domestic level. So to try to kind of expand uh, my horizons, I suppose, be really interesting. Take out some foreign countries and just get immersed with the culture. So I hope to do that in the coming years. So again, thank you. Yeah, good luck. I hope you do. It's, it's Totally, totally awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, thank you very much, Lily, and thank you all for being here and giving of your time and sharing, um, you know, any feedback that you've done in the chat or on the video here. I really appreciate your um, participation. It's really nice to have, to listen to all these um, different perspectives, and Priscilla, uh, definitely go, go um, you know, check out other places and, and travel, because um, it really does you know, open your eyes up to so much amazing. I can tell you, I only started traveling, what, three years ago, and I've been to Denver twice. I've been to Austin, Texas. I've been to Mexico. Uh, I've been to California. I'm going to California again. Uh, so, and I, I'm just like, and then I'm traveling locally here, and it's getting me to expand my bubble, right, from where I am in Pennsylvania um, to expand it out. And, like, even places like Ohio and New York have, like, a whole different – like, if you go to – obviously, if you're going up to north north um, New York, upstate New York, they, they have a whole different thing going on there than we have in central Pennsylvania. So even – so many different cultures right here. Yeah. 
right it's, here in this country. It's amazing. Like just even, you know, I know we're getting all excited about maybe international travel and, but that we can't maybe do this moment, but just kind of expanding uh, the thought of, of travel and saying, okay, well I can travel to a different neighborhood, even in my, we were talking about this on the call yesterday about how you can even go to a neighborhood that you're not familiar with and even in your town. And then you're yep. even experiencing something else. I was actually, I did a walk up the street to the store and I went down different streets than I typically do. I didn't go down like the main street. I went on these like side, side streets. There's like amazing porches in my neighborhood that I was just like, these are really cool porches. Um, and there's just different people that I would never have, you know, waved at or whatnot had I gone the way I always go for example. Yeah. So yeah. I think that there's a lot of ways to look at how you could have an authentic experience in life, um, mm -hmm. whether it's whether you're traving internationally or in the U.S. or just in your I think it all boils down to just downtown. pushing yourself out of your normal routine and comfort zone, right? Mm -hmm. Put yourself out there a little bit. Go to a different, a different place. Talk to people you wouldn't normally talk to and, you know, see what happens. And then what that brings us around to is that once you get that experience and you continue to practice that, it brings the calm. It brings the calm, right? Because then you aren't so anxious about going up to somebody in another country because you've already been doing it for a while. So you're like, oh, I've already asked people in whatever area. And so you're going to be then more confident and more calm. Right. So it kind of all comes back around to this whole idea about how we can really find calm if we dig into these authentic experiences in life, whether we're traveling or in our own hometown and then still find calm. Because then the more you're used to something, the more you practice it, the, the better it feels and the more confident you are about practicing that skill again. And you're building those muscles uh, yep. to feel calm. So. Thank you all for hanging out with us. Appreciate your time. Uh, love seeing everybody's faces on the call. I'm sorry for the people I didn't get to see, um, but I hope you guys come and join us next Wednesday. I'm gonna post this replay in our community uh, later today, uh, and then hope to see you on Wednesday. And you guys can like wave out and say bye as you guys leave. That would be great. Thank you so much, Lily. Bye. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks again. Bye -bye. Peace all. Thank you. Good seeing everyone. Bye.